Cristobal Cousin, writer, director, producer of Sabina K. and Let Me Have My Son. Before we get started with Chris's interview, let's take a look at his impressive director's reel. Okay, let's, uh, let's do it, John. All right, guys, this will be a picture. Movies are complete pictures made up of many fragmented pieces. It's like a tapestry that on one side presents this unified, uniform, beautiful artistic vision, but which if you flip it over and look on the back, would appear to be a jumble of thread. And making a movie is like that. You really have to know how all the pieces are going to fit together. The greatest highlight for me on this film was working with the cast and crew that I had the great privilege to work with. They were talented and I appreciate their talent, but I loved their uh, spirit, their personalities, the, you know, the friendships that I made. That is something that I will always treasure in my heart. <laughs> odnos njega i ekipe kompletne bez izuzetka ikakvog je ono toliko ljudski toliko nekako duhovan više nego nego bilo šta drugo i onako svi ga nekako smo smo ga zavoljeli ko ko oca i on nas ko djecu i to je to Your father, Josh. Some father you are. Don't you make a sound. You hear me? I write, I direct, tell stories, but you know what? I can't change a flat tire. I can't change oil in a car. I Somebody asked me, well, what do you use to edit? Like, you know, what software do I use to edit? My answer is I use an editor. That's how I edit, I use an editor. How do you shoot? I get a great cinematographer. <laughs> That one, he needs attending to. 
By him? He's a troublemaker. Peacemaker, actually. Suppose it makes him more dangerous. Stirring up strife with this reconciliation business. Or is he really so dangerous? Ah, he's just another thorn in the flesh that needs to be removed. Sending out the wrong message. Did you know I was there? Where? The township where he lives. I know him. Really? You know, it might make things more difficult for you if you know him. Or make me stronger? Yeah. I almost shot you. I find that there is a spiritual reality in film, and that the reason movies touch people is because they carry a spirit within them. And the spirit that's in that movie, that was put in there at the time of conception, that spirit will remain, because that's the spirit of God. <laughs> Fifty percent of directing is casting the film properly. Because when you cast the film properly as a director, a big part of your job is done. He was such a beautiful boy. So beautiful. The light of my eyes, my own dear son. I think of most films as dreamlike, in the sense that dreams are not always explainable, rationally speaking, but dreams always leave us with a feeling. Cruising, uh, the wonderful writer and director and producer of Sabina K, and also Let Me Have My Son, among others. Uh, so thanks for joining me, Chris. I really appreciate it. Yeah, sure. My pleasure, Valerie. Now, um, so before we get into everything, I just want to ask you about Sabina K and the Academy Awards and all of that. Can you just <laughs> tell us a little bit about how that happened and, you know. Well, let's be clear. It did not win an Academy Award. <laughs> yeah, I knew that. Yeah. It yeah, should no. have. It should <laughs> well, have. Yeah. Thank you for saying that. No, I, uh, to be 
to be clear, it was uh, considered um, to uh, it was considered for the Academy Awards as well. Let me be more specific. In the country of Bosnia and Herzegovina, they selected Sabina K, uh, or they reviewed Sabina K along with another film, maybe two other films. We were among the finalists uh, in the lead up to the sele Bosnia selection for the Academy Awards that year. I guess that was 2016. So we came real close, but no cigar in that sense. But it, as you say, I mean, uh, or as you infer, it, 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 it is a beautiful film and it was a wonderful experience making that film. And that's been our reward. Just, we know we made a beautiful film and it touches people's lives and hearts. And uh, that's, uh, that's gonna keep going, right? That'll endure. Exactly, my next point is exactly that. So maybe next time with your recent film, Let Me Have My Son. So can you tell me a little bit about that and you know, uh, what your goals are and you know, what you plan to do with the film? Sure. Well, Let Me Have My Son is a, also a feature length film. We're shooting that here in the United States as well as Mexico. And we have completed a little more than half of the filming. So slightly more than half of the film is in the can. And we're looking to finish up principal photography end of September this month. Well, no, not quite. We're not quite in September, but end of September, first part of October, we'll uh, be finishing up the shooting. And Let Me Have My Son is based on a very, uh, it's, it's a, it, well, it's a personal story. It's, it's based on my experiences with mental illness, specifically as mental illness has affected my family. And in the case of the film, my son, my firstborn child who uh, has struggled with schizophrenia who is actually now 38 years old and he is institutionalized at the moment, but we're hopeful that he will be able to um, transition into a less restrictive setting, a group home situation. But that's a long journey of, um, well, let's see, almost 20 years where it went from the time he was first diagnosed. And it's been, frankly, it was never something I even wanted to put in a film or thought of putting into a film it's just too painful mm -hmm. and, and some would say too private but i'm i'm not hung up on the privacy aspect of it so much anymore because i really believe it's something that needs to be shared and talked about openly and so we want the film to be a, a film of great beauty but a film that also um, shows great empathy for mm -hmm. people who are on the margins or have been written off due to mental illness, just excluded. So it's very much a redemptive film in that sense. Okay. All right. Um, so just very, very briefly, can you uh, talk to our audience uh, so that they're clear about uh, the tasks of the producer and the director and how they differ? Sure. Well, the audience should know that sometimes those roles do overlap and and often a director you'll see in the credits has a producer's credit in the screen credits i'm talking about you know he'll be mentioned as a producer as well so it it, it depends um but typically a producer is more uh, concerned with all of the uh, nuts and bolts if you will of the operation and uh, how to keep the train moving down the tracks and reaching the station on time mm -hmm. and leaving the station on time. All of those sort of business pragmatic kinds of choices and decisions that need to be made. Mm -hmm. The director is often referred to as the creative type, uh, the auteur um, of, of the production, the story. And you'll often hear an expression um, the director's vision. So, so the, so the crew and the cast, they're there to implement the director's vision. Um, 
and 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 not to make light of that because somebody needs a vision when you're making a film <laughs> otherwise yeah. you have chaos and a lack of direction so mm -hmm. but as i say they do often overlap mm -hmm. okay thank you for that now so the big thing that i wanted to talk to you about because my audience is primarily actors models and actors but um, can you talk to me about your casting process? How do you cast? What are you looking for? What makes an actor stand out? Um, you know, what's gonna, uh, going on inside your head when you're behind the camera and, and, you know, what kind of things will turn you off? Mm -hmm. Well, maybe I'll start with the last part of, the, of the, <laughs> the question, the things that would turn me off would be if an actor seems too anxious, you know, too eager, that can be a turn off. Um, mm -hmm. Chill, relax. <laughs> uh, just by working yourself up into more of a frenzy is not going to make you more appealing to the director. Mm -hmm. um, don't overthink it. Right. Directors, I can, I guess I could really only speak for myself in this, but uh, what I'm looking for is, is, um, sincerity i'm looking for a genuineness in in the character and let's be honest i'm also admittedly looking for something that to some extent i've preconceived so because i'm also a writer i often I usually write the scripts that i direct <clears throat> um, i've already created in, in 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 my mind a certain image of how i would envision the character the various characters in the story and so when someone auditions let's say for one of those characters the truth of the matter is that i even though i may not want to i have a bit of a preconception as to what i'm looking for in that character now that of course can work against uh, the the actor if the actor doesn't the actor auditioning doesn't fit that preconception however i still would stand by the point of being sincere, of being genuine, being authentic. Uh, there's, there's nothing less attractive to me than an actor who, who doesn't seem to feel something, you know, deep within something. If, if there's, if I don't see any sincerity coming out in the audition, mm -hmm. uh, it, it makes me think, well, this person's probably not someone I want to work with, you know, because mm -hmm. what do actors do at the end of the day? They make a role come to life, right? Mm -hmm. And so when you see a film, um, any film, you know, from the greatest films to the smallest films, when you're in the theater, it's the, it's the actors on the screen who are transporting you through the story. They're taking you on the journey and, and you want to be in their company, you know, you enjoy being in their company. And I th truly think that has to begin right at the very earliest stage of the audition. Mm -hmm. um, shall I tell you a little secret? Please. Well, when you auditioned for the oh, role of... I didn't know it was going to be about <laughs> me, but okay. Well, go ahead. When you auditioned for the role of Holly Christmas in um, Let Me Have My Son, I noticed... At the very end of that audition, when you were taking care of the old man, you know, you were a home care nurse and you were telling him good night, you showed a certain empathy and a, a certain caring um, came out of you. It, it, it came forth as you were doing that audition, playing that role that struck me is very genuine, mm. very, very genuine. And I kind of, well, I saw that and then I, in a sense, seized upon that. And I said to myself, I can start there and I can develop uh, working with this actor. I could start at, at that point of empathy, which I see very sincerely and genuinely in her persona. Mm -hmm. That can be the jumping off point to develop the character further because it's real, it's, it was true, 
Now, I think you, now that I've gotten to know you a bit, I think you are that way as a person. Um, so, yeah, so, so to me, that was, that was what did it for me in, the, in that role that you auditioned for. Mm -hmm. And yes, but, you know, I also love to collaborate with an actor. It's really not all about me as the director. I'm looking to see also what the actor is bringing to the part, you know, to the scene, what ideas he or she may have to make the scene better. You mentioned Sabina Kay earlier, the lead, <clears throat> the lead actress in Sabina Kay. She was constantly coming up with ideas for her part. I mean, constantly. Um, and I'll tell you, nine out of 10 times, they were great ideas. They were great ideas that she had. Um, so. Well, that's cool that you would be amenable to that, you know, because yeah. as an actor, you don't know if the producer or if the director is going to say, look, I know how to direct or, you know, you know, so you never know. I guess you could kind of test the water and say, you yeah. know, as an actor and say, hey, I think this actor, uh, this right. character would do such and such and such. Actually, that's a good point you make, test the waters, because let's face it, every, you know, directors are going to be different from each mm -hmm. other, right? They're not all going to be the same. They, they won't all have that approach that I outlined. That's me. That's my approach. That's how I work. But another director might be very different and not appreciate that. Yeah. So I can only speak for myself. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, I also, yeah, wanted to key off of that because you, you had talked about, we had on a separate conversation, we talked about you said you were looking for a character uh, in your film that wasn't necessarily attractive. Mm -hmm. and, and I was telling you about Jungle Fever, you know, and that they had a crack addict and the crack addict was Holly Berry, <laughs> ended up being right. Holly Berry. So, yeah. you know, uh, my question then is, how do you feel about, I mean, how do you feel about a, an actor coming in as, kind of dressed as the character um um mm -hmm. also there was i remember there was an actor in coming to america she said that she dressed like the mm -hmm. you know the character right but, you know or but some people don't like you to come in in a doctor's you know code or whatever right. looking like a doctor but the thing is if holly berry had walked in maybe she i don't know if she had the audition or they just gave it to her or what, but if she had walked in looking like Holly Berry, you know, they might have second thoughts about making, no, oh, can this lady play a crack addict? But she was fantastic in the role, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I'm not sure there's one answer to that question. Again, just speaking from my perspective, I would not necessarily be put off by an actor who auditions in, in quote unquote costume or wardrobe, uh, but that would not by itself convince me. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, the first question that I would have, though I wouldn't voice it to the actor, it wouldn't be fair, but the first question I would have within would be, mm -hmm. um, is this actor trying to compensate <laughs> for a lack of talent, you know, <laughs> and trying to kind of win me over by, you know, uh, outward accoutrements, you know? Mm -hmm. So, uh, so that would be, I guess, a danger in that process, I see. Yeah. but, but, it, but, it, but it wouldn't necessarily uh, turn me off either. So mm, I could see that mm -hmm. going either way. Mm -hmm. One quick question I want to ask, and this is kind of my personal thing, but you know, how does an actor go about asking for a clip for their from for their reel? Because some producers and directors are amenable to that, and some are not. But the thing is, is that clip really helps the yeah. actor to get the next job? And, you know, so, but, you know, some producers and directors are, don't want to be bought. They're like, hey, you did the job. It's my film. Move on, you know. Mm -hmm. So what, what are your thoughts about that? Well, if they have that reaction, that's being very unfair on their part to have that reaction and very uncaring and insensitive to the need of the actor. Because I agree with you, that is important uh, that the actor have access to that. In fact, in 
all the contracts with actors on Let Me Have My Son, I made sure the attorney wrote in there that um, a clip of the scenes would be made available to the actor uh, once the film is edited, you know. Maybe it said goes into release. I can't remember how that was worded. But personally, I'm very understanding of that and would want the actor to have it. So I suppose the my answer to your question would be make sure it's in your contract. Make sure it's in your contract. It only needs to be an extra sentence. Right, yeah. Um, okay. That you have, you're entitled to a free uh, digital clone of your scene and you want a digital clone because you want the highest quality in terms of the image that you can get mm -hmm. that doesn't apply so much these days but in the old days when uh, media was analog as you start going down generations the quality deteriorates uh, that's see. really not so much a concern now but you want you want a high quality duplicate uh, of your your scene mm -hmm. and you might even put um, outtakes if possible oh nice okay uh, right. because maybe your favorite part ended up on the cutting room floor and you'd like it for your reel right mm -hmm. so that's a very good point mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um you know my audience might not know that you are like this incredible and phenomenal actor. I didn't know that. What and... are you talking about? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's but uh, having said that, can you talk to me about making a choice and what's the best way for an actor to prepare and get their best performance? Because, mm. you know, I recently auditioned for something and I don't know why. But the character was smoking a cigarette. It just mm. came out that way. It, it wasn't like in a script. So it's about oh. making a choice, you know, especially in, in an audition. So you're saying you as an actor, as you prepared for the role, you came up with the idea that you would smoke a cigarette as part of the audition? Is that what I heard you say? Yes, that's true. Uh, based on what I knew about the character, you know, yes, right. and I made that choice. That wasn't in the script, but I, I, I got the part. You know, so, <laughs> but I yeah, just wanted I think, to speak think, to that. <clears throat> yeah, I think you need to to trust your your intuitions, you know, and your choices, and run with that. Um, uh, there's a great uh, quote that I, I I just love this quote um, from the French. He's passed on now, but French director Robert Besson, who said that. Um, um, your, 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 uh, your intuitions, he said, trust what your heart is telling you or your intuition is telling you a hundred times more than what your head is telling you. Mm. <clears throat> and, um, Frank Capra, another great director said that, you know, um, I can't quote him quite as well, but the point was that, you know, again, trust your intuition. Your intuition is trying to tell you something. <laughs> and, uh, you know, obviously that doesn't apply just to acting. That applies to life, right? I mean, mm -hmm. we all have feelings, right? You know, this sort of a sixth sense and something's not quite right here or there or whatever. Right, right. Everybody can relate to that, right? Mm -hmm. Well, the same is true of acting. As you, you know, prepare for this role and you soak up everything you possibly can as you study um listen to your heart yeah and don't just listen to the head but listen to the heart mm -hmm. okay well i have two quick questions and then i'm gonna let you go i know you're busy you're still editing let me have my son um but what do you look for when reviewing a resume and uh do you have any other advice that you'd like to give to prospective actors before we close um <clears throat> well, the headshot is important for sure. I mean, um, even though you may not look like that headshot, <laughs> if, if at least it's close enough for someone to say, oh, oh yeah, I see, you know, um, that's important because sometimes you're just simply trying to create um, a collage as a director, I'm saying. If, if you have 
if you have a, if you have scenes with 20, 30 or more people, <coughs> excuse me, as we do with Let Me Have My Son coming up, uh, you know, we've been looking for extras, right? Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I'm trying to get a, uh, a kind of global picture and having those headshots of 30 plus people is very helpful, right? Mm -hmm. I can kind of get a sense. But on the resume itself, I would just say, if you don't have a lot of real world experience per se, um, I, I wouldn't want you to lie about something, like totally make something up, invent something. But if anything comes close to <laughs> some sort of work experience, put it down. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can always modify it later as your career grows. You can get rid of those little parts you had down there. But to just say, oh, I'm just starting out and I've never done anything before, well, that's probably not such a good idea. I mean, if you've acted for your family uh, around the table at Thanksgiving or something, uh, you know, <laughs> put family theater, <laughs> something. I mean, you know, um, if you're really serious about this and you have a passion for it, uh, don't be shy to put down. Uh, all your credits if you're first, you know, if you're just getting started, it, you need something there. And as your career grows, you can winnow those out. You can delete them over time and lead with what's strongest. Okay. Any last words of advice for actors? Mm, I would say this is, let me put it this way. Um, in, a, in a way, if you really want to be an actor, you don't need my encouragement because you're going to do it no matter what. Mm -hmm. So I guess the final word of advice would be, don't be dissuaded. Don't be, don't let yourself be held back by negativity or people who make even mean comments or people who say, yeah, you'll never, you'll never make it in that. Now, as I say, if you really want to be an actor, you're not going to let that hold you back anyway. All I'm saying is, yeah, that's true. You're going to keep going. And you know what? Keep going. Mm -hmm. Well, Chris, it has been an absolute pleasure. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me today. And I wish you so much success, continued success with uh, Let Me Have My Son and any of your future endeavors. Thank you very much, Valerie. I appreciate it. Okay, bye-bye. Okay, bye. Cruzen's film, Sabina K, was shot on location in Bosnia. It was in Oscar consideration in the Best Foreign Language Film category. Sabina K. also won Best Picture and Best International Film at ICVM in Cincinnati, Ohio. He is currently in production for his latest film, Let Me Have My Son.